everybody, this is Tina. Um, today is Monday, um, July the 23rd, I think. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it is, um, I'm coming to make this video because it is two weeks, um, 14 days of post-op brachioplasty for me. I can't believe that it has been two weeks already. Um, I'm just kind of walking around, looking around. I, I'm not supposed to, like, pick anything up or do much of anything right now, but, ugh, it's going to make me crazy. <laughs> um, yeah. Where am I at here? I'm going to come sit down in here, I think. Whew, sorry. Oh. Anyway, hope you guys are all doing well today. I just kind of wanted to talk to you guys about how I'm doing and everything. Um, two weeks post-op brachioplasty. I am still in my compression garments. I will be for a long time. Love them. Those of you that have had bra uh, brachioplasty, arm lift surgery, and are going to, I'm telling you, this is these are great. I mean, it just feels good. Um, but let me just show you. I, I have taken still pictures of my arms as the process is going on, and I will show them. Um, yeah, I think they're just going to be. They're really red, and I did end up getting a rash from the tape that I had to cover from my ins from my where my drain tube is but and I am wearing a tank top and I don't wear tank tops and I'm this is a yeah that's a whole nother video but this is my arm this is my arm here it is way smaller than what it was and then I don't know this is kind of gross but maybe it's TMI but that's kind of my my drain hole and then the and part of the incision that goes up into my armpit but really my arms are you know they're a lot smaller I mean they were hanging down you know pretty far um, you know I think four or five inches are taken are gone and still swollen but um yeah coming along coming along nicely love where she placed the, the incision love it um, I'm really excited about it because they're 16 inches long <laughs> they're quite big how am I feeling? I am feeling good. I'm feeling stressed. I'm feeling hungry. I've watched a lot of videos. Oh, great videos. Oh, my word. Great videos. There goes the phone. Every time. <laughs> um, let's see. How, I, how do I want to just talk about this in a few minutes? It's so hard. I could probably make a 20-minute video and bore y'all. Um, and I say y'all like I'm a... like. That's so funny. Um, anyway. <laughs> I've been hungry. And I, you know, I can't work out. It's going to be six to eight weeks before I can get back into kettlebells. Um, get back into with my trainer. I can't wait. My body is like, I'm like, <sighs> wanting so badly to work out. But, um, not going to happen right now. I did too much on Saturday. I made the bed. We have a big king size bed and I was pulling up we have a thicker a thicker quilt on the bed and I pulled it up and it I just felt like something ripped and I freaked out and we looked and everything looked okay but I just I gotta be really really careful so I, I just can't do that and I was and then it started to hurt even more um, you know I, I just think a lot of a lot of where I'm, the hunger is coming from I know is emotional stuff we are having um, and I've been struggling, and I'm just going to share this with you guys. I am struggling with money, with the fact that we live in western South Dakota, and we have a small ranch. Not a big ranch, but a small ranch. And we raise sheep, and we have horses, and chickens. We, we don't have any more cattle, which we only had those in the beginning um, when we first moved here. But um, because of the drought that we're in, and those of you who are, that are watching that are ranchers might understand what I'm talking about if you're in a drought-ridden area. Um, we have to buy a lot of hay coming up fall, and this is the time of year we start looking and getting, you know, getting hay. And we have uh, one of my dearest friends, they have a humongous 800, 900-acre uh, ranch up north of us. And the prices, let's just say... Over the years, we have paid $65 a ton, which is for, I don't know for those of you that know or see the big round bales. There's 65 for two of them. Now, because of the drought, 
the franchers and farmers, which bless their hearts. I mean, they work hard, and I, and you know, but they're charging now 200 plus for two of those, for a ton of hay. Well, we went from 65 last year to 200. We need like 30 or 40, maybe more. I don't know, a whole bunch. It's going to cost us thousands of dollars, th thousands more dollars than what we normally spend, and we don't have the cash on hand. Um, I'm sure the bank could give us a loan, an ag loan or whatever, but I just, it's very upsetting to me that I feel like we're being price gouged. And I don't have a problem telling them farmers, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have my friends over for supper, because that's where we get our hay from, and I'm going to feed them a nice dinner, and then I'm going to tell them <laughs> in a nice, kind, loving way. Because I just, I run a business, and I, I set my prices for my, for my preschool. So my tuition and parents pay once a month, and so there's another another Christian preschool that um, kind of my competition, and um, I'm better. But anyway, <laughs> um, but they um, charge probably forty dollars more a month than what I charge, and I'm better, uh, more experience, I should say. I'm just being fun, but th they're a good school as well. I have not raised my prices. I feel that, you know, I want to, it's a mission of mine. It is, you know, I want to help people. We, we don't live in a very uh, rich area. We're not, you know, it's just a lot of hardworking, you know, agriculture people. Um, and so I want to try to keep the prices low enough so I can, um, you know, have these children come to my preschool and teach them and, and, and just have that whole experience be wonderful. And if I track my prices up, you know, yeah, my enrollment's way more than this other school. Um, I just, I, I really want to, you know, do that, and I feel that that is a, the right thing to do, and that's what God wants me to do. <sighs> so here I am getting preachy, but I just, I'm stressed, and it makes me want to eat. I am stressed because where are we going to come up with the money? So now come this Thursday, and a couple days from now, we're having to haul a bunch of lambs to sale. My girls are upset because some of these lambs are nice lambs and they can raise them to be um, breeding ewes and, and keep that in our bloodline and we've got a really great thing going, but we cannot afford to keep them. So I want to eat. I want to eat chocolate. I want to eat pizza. I want to eat tiramisu cake that my family brought yesterday, which, by the way, I have not had any. Um... So yeah, I mean, I'm 125, 26 pounds down now, 126 pounds down. And I know if I ate bad, I would start gaining because I'm not exercising. I can't exercise for almost two, I mean, so I have to be really, my trainer said, protein and veggies, Tina, protein and veggies. You know, you can throw a few carbs in there. And I usually carb load on the days that I work out with my, at my boot camp with her. And then the other days I just walk, I don't eat a lot of carbs at all. So I'm really, protein and veggies, protein and veggies, because I'm so afraid I'm going to gain. And, you know, she's concerned about it as well. And so it's all a mental thing. I'm just trying to psych myself out. I'm just trying to, okay, all right, and pray. I've been praying a lot. And, I, and, and I'm a believer. And I, it's just hard. It's just hard because those of us that have that emotional eating, that eating where, where I didn't get to 350 pounds by you know, that's how I got 350 pounds. I had so much tragedy and loss in my early 30s. I'm 44 now that I gained so much weight because I ate because that made me feel good. I didn't know what else to do. I didn't have the mental capacity. I was depressed. Um, I've been to counseling. I've worked. I know where the weight came from. I suffered extreme loss. I was raised a multimillionaire and all that was gone. You know, if you just imagine one day you could buy anything you want, go anywhere you want, and the next day to come to find out there's people at your door saying, uh, you know, a certain family member has embezzled and taken a bunch of money, and now granted, my money was in all inherited money. I didn't earn it. So, I, but I've worked through all this. So, imagine, you know, and then loss. I've had five miscarriages. I've lost my, my best friend, my mom. You know, I mean, but losing your home and everything that you've known your whole life. That's where I became 350 pounds. And I'm scared I'm going to go back. 
I did not have weight loss surgery. I was going to have weight loss surgery. Um, and I met my trainer and we've done it without it. Um, so, oh, I could probably talk for a long time. <laughs> I'd love to have coffee with some of y'all, with some of you guys, because I just, I'm a talker. I like to talk. Um, so I'm just struggling right now with, with the emotional eating, and I'm going to just try and hold it together. And I'm not eating any tiramisu. I'm not eating any of it. They can eat it. I'm not having any of it. I try to tell them it's not good for them. But that's fine. So I can walk for like 20 minutes. So I'm, I am going to go for a little walk. I'm going to be careful, but I am going to go for a little walk. Um, so I'm hoping that just clears my head and just my chew gum. And I'm going to just... Yeah, try not to eat. It's hard when you can't, you know, I've used exercise. I've swung my kettlebells. I get home, if I'm feeling hungry, I'm feeling stressed, I could go swing my 40-pound my kettlebell or do some lifting or whatever. Or call my trainer and text her and say, I, you know, let's, can we get in an extra workout? Can we do something? I can't do that right now, and I think that's what I'm, I'm what's hard for those of us that are having plastic surgery. It's hard just to, because a lot of us who have lost a lot of weight then, you know, have to go to plastics and, and um, it's just tough, tough stuff, guys. All right, I don't know how long I've talked because my little camera doesn't have a little thing on the front to tell me how long I've talked. So hope you guys are doing great on this Monday, and thanks for listening, and thanks, you guys. I, I am really finding that there's a lot of you that I think we're going to be good friends, and I think we can just help each other. So thank you all very much. All right, we'll talk to you later. <laughs> Thanks. Bye.